Good day and welcome to our mini-series on pipeline survey techniques. Today I'm joined with a field expert, Neil Webb, and he's here to help us better understand close interval potential surveys. Now today we're going to get into how they work, their applications, and what makes them such a critical tool in pipeline integrity surveys. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to find more of these videos. So Neil, what is a SIPS survey and why is it so important? Well, the, the acronym SIPS represents Close Interval Potential Survey. And the underlying principle of it is that it allows the operator to measure the potential of the pipeline with respect to soil at points in between fixed test points that get installed during the pipeline construction. Now, could you talk us through the process, how an operator would go about conducting a SIP survey, what sort of equipment they'd use, what a day conducting a SIP survey looks like? Well, the most important thing, of course, is the uh, equipment that actually records the data from the survey. So you have to have a data logger of some description. And because it is not just recording data with respect to time, it's more than just your average multimeter. Mm. The surveys are done with customized equipment where the equipment then takes a reading from the reference electrodes, which is defined both in terms of time and the status of the system. Now, the reason why that is important is that one of the uh, aspects of, of cathodic protection that sits behind the principle of the SIP survey is that we need to measure what are known as IR-free potentials. These measurements are taken in order to remove the errors in potential measurement, which occur due to current flowing in the soil. So one of the ways of doing it, and there are several, is to actually interrupt the cathodic protection current. Uh, by interrupting the cathodic protection current, the current in the soil drops to zero and the IR factor, as it is known, then drops to zero. And the reading that you get is then very close to the true potential mm -hmm. of the pipeline with respect to soil at the interface, because that is what we are interested in. The current that's flowing through the soil causes these errors, which often leads operators into a false sense of security. And originally in the codes and standards, people didn't used to do this. And they found that pipelines that they thought might well be protected were not. And so they, with further research and development experience and so on, have come up with the principle that the level of protection of a pipeline is determined by compliance with an IR-free potential measurement. Oh, interesting. Now, why do we use reference electrodes in subsurveys? Well, as I've said, we, we are measuring the potential of the pipeline with respect to ground. And if you were to take a piece of scrap steel and stick it in the ground and use that as a contact to get, because remember, every measurement has to have two cables. One connects to the pipe, the other one connects to the ground. So if you put your steel rod into the ground, you'll get a measurement. Without changing anything, if you put a copper rod in the ground, you'll get a different measurement. Mm -hmm. If you put a stainless steel screwdriver in the ground, you'll get a different measurement. So the point about a reference electrode is that it is a, a means of getting a contact with the ground, the earth, which is always the same. Okay. And a is a reference standard. And the one that we use most commonly in uh, land-based pipelines is a copper rod in a solution of copper sulfate. Okay. And we call it the copper sulfate or CSE electrode. Now, what sort of data does a SIP survey generate? Well, the data logger with this computerized data logger knows where the reading is being taken. It knows what time it has been taken. And it knows whether the status of the pipeline is cathodic protection on or cathodic protection off. So the data is then recorded sequentially with time as you walk along the pipeline, taking these readings, you keep the reference electrodes in the ground. And each point represents a section of pipe of about three meters um, for a, a pipe that's buried a meter deep. And so 
at the end of the day, you take this data, you plot it out on a graph, and you get a graph of pipeline potential, both on potentials and off potentials, plotted over the distance of the pipeline. So you can see what the potential is. If the pipeline is in good condition and the coating is in good condition, everything's working fine, you'll find that the potentials that you measure at a test point will remain reasonably constant over the ground until you get to the next test point, unless, for example, maybe you cross a river or some other geological feature which can cause changes. But more importantly, the changes in potential of the pipeline are caused by changes in the condition of the pipeline, particularly the external coating. Now this piece of pipe here is not one that we would use for burial. It's a piece of a fire main, but you can see it's got a bright red coating on it. So if you imagine that this, instead of being a bright red coating, was a nice heavy coating that insulates the pipe from the earth, if that coating degrades or gets damaged, then the steel will be exposed directly to the soil. Right. And we would likely then see a change in the potential of the pipeline where something like that happens. Okay. So you've kind of already started to answer my next question, which was how would a SIP survey help a pipeline owner determine whether their pipeline is protected, whether it's already started to corrode? Well, the potential of the pipeline measured with respect to soil tells us straight away whether the pipeline is corroding or not. There are internationally accepted criteria. The most common one is a negative potential of 850 millivolts or more negative. It indicates that the pipeline corrosion rate is acceptable. Okay. There is no such thing as a zero corrosion rate. So we have an acceptable corrosion rate. Okay. And that corrosion rate is 10 microns per year. So it's effectively nothing. Yeah. So the challenge then is that there may be conditions on the pipeline surface or there may be geological conditions which result in the pipeline no longer being polarized, in other words, shifted to a potential that is more negative than this minus 850 criterion. So the, the results from our survey will tell us whether the cathodic protection system is effective in that area, whether there are problems with the condition of the pipeline coating, mm -hmm. or whether there may be geological conditions that have affected the protection of the pipe. For example, the pipeline might be shielded by a non-conductive rock formation or something like that. And also one of the other common problems that we come across in pipeline work is foreign contact. A foreign contact can be something as simple as a piece of scrap steel that got left in the trench. Right. And you may laugh, but the most significant piece of scrap steel that I've found in a pipeline trench is a full-sized farm gate. Wow. We were doing a survey and we found this defect from a close interval survey and the contractor went back to dig up the defect and find excavate, find out what the defect was. And when he opened up the trench, he found a farm gate that had got dragged into the trench during backfilling and was hard up against the pipe and uh, compromising the CP system. Sure. Yeah. Now, can SIP surveys only be used on a system that has cathodic protection? Yes and no. Uh, the most common use is with pipelines that have cathodic protection. Okay. But if you have a pipeline which does not have cathodic protection and you want to do a risk analysis on the pipeline, you can do a subsurvey on a non-protected pipeline. And what we call the natural potential of the pipeline will tell us whether or not the pipe is subject to corrosive conditions or not. So it's not a common application, but it can be done. The most common application of SIPs is for cathodically protected pipelines. Okay. Yes. And can you use a SIP survey in areas with stray currents? You can. Believe it or not, there, there are some rather draconian statements in some of the standards that say you can't use this in stray current environments. It's not valid in stray current environments. And that's not strictly true. You have to be extra careful okay. in stray current environments because... Straight currents cause variations in potential as well. So if you have a means of differentiating whether changes in potential on the pipeline are due to straight currents or something else, then you can still do a SIP survey 
in a stray current area. And the way we do that is to use a second data logger that is synchronized to the data logger that is taking the readings walking along the pipe. And that data logger is stationary, so it records changes with respect to time. Okay. So you can then compare the results of the static and the uh, mobile data. Okay. And if an inflection in the graph appears on the static data as well as the mobile data, you know that inflection is then caused by stray currents and not by a pipeline feature. Right. And would you use GPS synchronization with that? Yes. So the whole system is, nowadays is GPS synchronized. Okay. Um, it has made our lives as surveyors far, far easier. Some of the very early surveys were done with direct radio synchronization using a pilot signal. They were big and cumbersome. We then moved on to the area of crystal clocks, okay. uh, which were better, mm. but they drift and uh, they're accurate over a long period of time. But at any point in time, they can be up to 10, 15, maybe even 100 milliseconds out. Yeah. And the synchronization of these surveys and the equipment and the switches and so on has to be better than 10 milliseconds as an absolute maximum. Well, thank you, Neil. I think that it is clear that SIPS is a valuable tool in assessing the integrity of your pipeline. We hope that this discussion has given you a better understanding about what SIPS is and how it is important in pipeline integrity management. Stay tuned for more episodes of our Pipeline Survey Technique mini-series. Thanks for watching.